Welcome to the 10th episode of the Grand Cosmic Story. What makes our solar system special is our sun a rare breed? How our solar system will end in the far future? Are you curious about the world around you? Do you wonder what else is out there beyond our world? Dr. Lata Christie a scientist and an author will take you on a journey through the universe join her in exploring the universe through her web series the grand cosmic story stay tuned to find out what today's episode is all about Researchers at the Niels Bohr Institute, University of Copenhagen have investigated more than 1000 planetary system planets orbiting their stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Their research on planetary orbits, the number of planets and the distance to their stars in a solar system showed that our own solar system is rare and special in many ways. So compared to all other solar systems what makes our solar system so special that it has a habitable blue planet simply teeming with complex intelligent life like us number 1 we have the right sun this is because our sun is a 4.5 billion year old stable main sequence yellow dwarf star which has been stable for a considerable period of astronomical time It was formed when a giant spinning cloud of gas and dust called the solar nebula collapsed under its own gravity and flattened into a disk. Our sun is the only star in our solar system, and all eight planets in our solar system revolves around the sun in the same direction and virtually the same plane as the original solar nebula, except for Venus and Uranus. All the other planets also rotate about their axis in the same direction. The Earth is rotating at 1000 miles per hour on its axis, completing one cycle every 24 hours and revolving around the sun at 107000 km per hour. This truth that the Earth is revolving around the sun and not the other way was put forth by Copernicus around 400 years back as he had the mental power to imagine the impossible during his period laying the foundation for modern astronomy our sun can harbor life for another 5 billion years after which it would turn from yellow dwarf to red giant when almost all of the hydrogen in its core will be consumed When it turns into a red giant towards the end of its life it would grow so large that it will engulf the inner planets and even our earth itself The second reason that our solar system is special is the presence of the giant gas planets that offers protection from asteroids and comets our solar system consists of the rocky inner planets mercury venus earth and mars the gas giants jupiter and saturn the ice giants uranus and neptune and the moons Between Mars and Jupiter lies the asteroid belt with a collection of asteroids while beyond Neptune there are small icy bodies like Pluto and comets. Jupiter is the guardian of the inner solar system. Its powerful gravitational field draws comets and other space rocks away from us shielding us from bombardment from asteroids, comets and meteors. Those space rocks must first get past the vast gravity of Jupiter before it can crash onto Earth. On July 16th, 1994, Jupiter absorbed the full brunt of the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 when the huge comet around 2 km in diameter smashed into Jupiter's southern hemisphere with the force of 300 million atomic bombs. The fragments smashed into Jupiter's atmosphere with a velocity of 221,000 km per hour creating huge plumes that were 2000 to 3000 km high heating the atmosphere to temperature as hot as 30,000 to 40,000 degrees Celsius. The third reason for the speciality is the presence of asteroids and comets. Do you wonder why? Multiple geochemical studies have shown that 
we need to thank comets and asteroids for Earth's water. They delivered water to our planet when Earth was just half a billion years old, enabling the existence of life. When our solar system was formed, its signature ingredient, water, was not found due to the blazing heat of the sun and the Earth's relatively feeble gravity. Scientists suspect that water was brought to our Earth during the initial formation period of our solar system either by comets or by a hail of icy asteroids from the asteroid belt that would have been flung inwards towards the inner rocky planets. They believe that this might be the reason for our oceans. Many of us are fascinated by the ocean. There is something mysterious about the ocean. Ocean waves inspire our emotions, mood and imagination and stir our hearts. William Wordsworth called the ocean a mighty harmonist. To know that comets and asteroids are responsible for such a beautiful ocean is awe-inspiring. Our planet consists of five major oceans, the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic and Southern Oceans and the continents that frame them define the boundaries of each ocean. However, if we journey back and visit the Earth nearly 4 billion years back, our planet was mostly covered by oceans except for the land that was lying along the equator constituting a single supercomponent called Pangaea. Plate tectonic theory, which is accepted by most geologists, say that the pieces of Pangaea that began to move apart became the modern continents around 3 billion years ago. Earth is the only known planet whose surface is divided into continents and oceans. The fourth reason for the uniqueness of our solar system is our moon. Have you ever thought what would happen if the moon disappeared? Firstly, Earth's ocean would have much smaller tides, about one third the size of what they are now. Tides affect oceanic life, like the reproductive activities of fish and ocean plants. Floating plants and animals ride the tidal currents between the breeding areas and deeper waters. The tides help remove pollutants and circulate nutrients for the survival of ocean plants and animals. Secondly, the Earth's rotation on its axis would be destabilized. Thirdly, we would not be having seasons and climate changes. But how did this moon come into existence? When a Mars-sized object collided with Earth 4.5 billion years back, two things happened. Firstly, it knocked off a chunk that would become the moon. Secondly, it also tilted Earth sideways a bit, 23.5 degrees relative to our orbital plane, so that our planet now orbits the Sun on a slant. Why is this tilt important? Without Earth's tilt, there would be no seasons. During the course of one year, the amount of sunlight striking the northern and southern hemisphere varies as they wobble back and forth. First, the southern hemisphere leaning sunward and then the northern hemisphere leans. This cycle drives Earth's seasonal variation. If you just close your eyes and imagine a world with no seasons, no spring, no summer, no autumn and no winter, how could it be? In a world with no seasons, we would be either cold all the time or hot all the time, likely congregating in the planet's tropical midsection and humanity would be in a very sorry state. This is because without seasons, the extreme end of north and south latitude would be chill all the time, while the equator would be much hotter than now all the time. We would probably not have migratory birds or animals. The most important problem in an earth with no season would be that all of earth's population would have to live on a very small land surface as most of the land would be covered with water due to raised sea level. Overall, the survival on earth would have been much harsher. Because of its elliptical orbit with a tilted axis, each and every corner of Earth is able to receive sunlight at regular intervals, helping the sustenance of life and making our Earth a habitable planet. Moon has been a point of fascination for many of us ever since our childhood. We have been told stories about the granny sitting on the moon and stitching. 
In every culture, the moon has always been the subject of many myths, legends associated with magic, folklore, superstitious beliefs and ancient rituals because the moon is a powerful force of nature. On a full moon day, when the sky is clear, no one can deny that just looking at the moon feels magical and amazing. On the moon, we can see the history of our planet engraved. How a giant impact, a literal bang, has gifted this wonderful companion to us. An unknown quote goes this way. We live on a blue planet that circles around a ball of fire next to a moon that moves the sea and you don't believe in miracles? How our solar system came to be so uniquely designed? Who orchestrated this violent impact in a natural way, giving rise to the Earth's tilt which is responsible for seasons and for the moon which governs the tides? Have all these things happened by chance? Or is it beautifully orchestrated by a wonderful designer? This sense of cosmic wonder makes us reflect upon the contingency, beauty and design of the heavens so our mind shouts out, there is a designer behind the cosmos. What could be more clear or obvious when we look up to the sky and contemplate that there is some divinity of superior intelligence? There is, said Lois, no reason why the minute earth and the yet smaller human creatures upon it should not be the most important thing in a universe that contains the spiral nebulae. No reason, that is, if God exists. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. That's all for today. See you again in the next episode. Let's find out why our Earth is so special 